What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So a couple weeks back, if you guys remember, Wifey Sauce and I got together and curated a list for a $400 gaming PC on Amazon.com. And shortly after that, we bought all the parts and I actually had Wifey Sauce assemble the PC all on her own, I'm very proud of her, and uh, we ran some tests on this $400 system. While it's not gonna give you the highest end experience when it comes to gaming, uh, it sure is a great way to get your foot in the door when it comes to PC gaming if you don't have the money to throw down on a mid-range to high-end system. The target resolution and sort of experience that we're going for today is 1080p, 60 FPS. And I think for most people that's a comfortable experience especially given the price point of today's rig. So why don't we go ahead and check it out. Let me grab the camera right here and show off the exterior of the system first off with the chassis. Now this is not the case that we initially picked out in the part one video, which you can go ahead and check out in the cards. The initial case that we found was like a beige box that looked like it was about 100 years old, but then we found this Olivetti. Not exactly sure what the model number is off the top of my head, but I'll leave links to all these parts in the description below, guys, if you want to check that out. Um, but it's a fantastic little case for about 35 bucks, I think we paid for it, and it did include a power supply, which is generally not the best sign, but when you're talking about a $400 gaming PC, that's exactly what we were looking for. Uh, it's actually not a bad looking case for the price. I mean, you've got some nice LED action here, blue power button, and uh, some backlit red logo right there. Got these nice little hidden flaps. You got two USB 2 and your audio and mic. I know, no USB 3. It's quite a sin, but again, 400 bucks, guys, 400 bucks. Um, but uh, it is a very light case. It's got, uh, it's got sort of these feet that are that are sort of angled. It makes the case look like it's sort of at a slant, which is not my favorite, but you know. I do like the fact that there's some ventilation on the side panel here, just a little bit by the graphics card. Let's go ahead and pop this guy off and see how Wifey Sus did on her first ever unsupervised PC build. Ah, look at that. She did a fantastic job with cable management. I mean, with what she had to work with, which was this crappy little case, and, uh, you know, bad power supply with just these awful cables. Look at this thing. I don't think I could have done a better job of this myself. She did a really nice job. Actually, take a look at the back. The back's even more impressive. Look at, she She did this. She did all this cable management. I didn't tell her to, to use zip ties or to use these the, the tie-down points. She just did a fantastic job. Very proud of her. I think I'm going to have her build everything from now on. Hope she's cool with that. But let's dive into some of the tech specs here, starting with our CPU, which is the Intel G4560 dual-core processor at a fixed 3.5 gigahertz. This is a lock CPU, so we're running at that clock speed for the entirety of today's tests. We've also got a beautiful motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the H... Uh, what the f*** is this? H110M M.2, I think. But uh, for memory, we've got eight gigs. We've got two four gig sticks. Now, initially, I was gonna, I was just going to run with one, a single, a single four gig stick, th thinking that I could scrape by. I'm so glad that I went with a dual channel kit, giving us eight gigs in total of this, co uh, not Corsair, crucial memory, uh, just because there are so many games these days that will max that out. So very glad that we went that out, that route. Look at this, an M. How many four hundred dollar gaming PCs can you say? has an M.2 SSD just chilling there in the motherboard slot. Uh, not many, but uh, unfortunately it's not NVMe. That would have taken a miracle to pull off. Still, 128 gig for our boot drive, uh, SATA-based M.2 SSD from Electronics, probably a Chinese OEM brand I've never heard of. Uh, but, but there you go, this thing boots in 24 seconds, guys. $400 PC booting in 24 seconds. And while it would have been super cool to get a 250 gig in there, it just was not working for our budget. But at least 128 gives us plenty of room for the operating system and a few minor programs. Can't forget about mass storage, though. So we've got a one terabyte WD Caviar Green, which was already formatted and stuff. And it was named BB when I first got it. This was sold to me as new but it's clearly used and has been has been fondled with in the past. And I, I don't like that, it makes me feel uncomfortable. And then we've got our graphics card here, GTX 1050 from MSI. This is not a TI. Now I did overclock this guy. We put a 100 megahertz uh, offset on the core clock, 300 megahertz offset on the memory clock. I believe we were boosting on the core clock up to about 1784 megahertz, if I remember correctly and our memory clock speed was just over 1900. Now, one of the great things about entry-level budget-oriented gaming PCs is that they typically don't get very hot or loud. And this system right here is no exception. We were only seeing about 50 degrees C on our G4560 here, which is fantastic because those cooler temperatures means that the uh, fan on the CPU cooler here, the stock cooler from Intel does not have to spin up as, as fast. And so the system stays very, very quiet, as Elmore Fudd would say. We've also got decent thermals on the graphics card, not heating up more than 68, 69 degrees Celsius at any given time under load, which is super fantastic. Overall, this is a quiet, 
and cool running system, but is it a well-performing one? I ran six different titles at 1920 by 1080, and this was of course using the latest Wickle driver from NVIDIA, which I will pop up right there. Now, as you go about viewing the benchmarks, guys, be sure to keep in mind what quality settings we were running for each game, because it does change from game to game based on what the system is able to handle. But for the most part, we were able to run most titles at high settings, no problem. So on that note, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here are the performance marks for our $400 Amazon gaming PC. So there you guys have it. What do you guys think of these results? I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. $400, with a $400 system, this is about the price of a modern day console, but I feel like the experience is a bit richer and it's, it's a full blown PC, so there's just so much more that you can do with it in general. But I don't know, would you call this a console killer? I didn't put it in the title or anything because I didn't really have that in mind when I went into this video, but would you consider this a console killer with the with the performance that we're seeing today? And honestly, the performance is, is great. I mean, we're seeing well above 60 FPS in certain games that are pretty easy to run, like Overwatch and CSGO. I'm sure like Dota 2 and stuff like that would also do really well, League of Legends and that sort of thing. Uh, and then even, even the more demanding titles at high settings, we're seeing around 60 FPS on average, 1% lows were all uh, above 30 FPS with 0.1% lows just uh, sometimes I think in one or two games like PUBG which isn't very well optimized in the first place uh, we're seeing below 30 FPS with the 0.1% lows but for the most part average frame rates and frame times were looking pretty solid again for $400 guys let me know what you think of this PC in the comments below. That is gonna do it for now, guys. Be sure to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. You can also check out Bitwit Ultra, my ad-free early access channel for a buck 50 a month. The first two weeks are completely free and you can back out any friggin' time. As always, I'm Kyle Bitwit. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Like, seriously, some really good stuff. I've got these two Ultra Rods right here from Asus that are getting uh, installed very shortly. That's gonna be a fun video. We've got a studio tour coming soon. 43 inch monitor. Yeah, that's fun. I'm gonna go edit this video now before working on the rest of this stuff, but thank you guys again so much for joining me today. I will see you all in the next video.